Buckthorn is a non-native species of tree and shrub. There's two species, common buckthorn and glossy buckthorn. You're more likely to find common buckthorn growing in your yard. Because it was brought here from another country, it lacks its predators, its insects, and diseases that kept it in check in its native range. Once it's introduced to an area, it quickly outcompetes all of our native plants, and there's nothing growing on the forest floor. It leafs out early, it keeps its leaves late into the fall, continues to photosynthesize while other plants have gone dormant. So that gives it another advantage. Ultimately, it shades out an area entirely and no plants underneath it can grow. And so you end up with pretty much a whole monoculture of buckthorn. But once buckthorn takes over, there's no native plants in all of our wildlife and birds and pollinators depend on those native plants. And without their food sources, uh, buckthorn has very little value to wildlife. To identify buckthorn, the only thorn on a buckthorn are on these terminal ends of the buds. You can see a small tip there, that's the thorn. Only female trees produce berries that birds eat, that gives them diarrhea. They immediately spread it around the forest floor and it quickly spreads. People should also not eat buckthorn berries for the same reason. So bare minimum, remove all of your female plants, all those berry producing plants. The berries start out green in the middle of the summer. They later turn black and they'll generally stay on the tree all winter. The leaves of common buckthorn are oval to elliptical. There's fine tooths around the edge of the buckthorn. They have a tip at the end. The top of the leaves are shiny or glossy. The undersides of the leaves are lighter in color. You might see some fading of the leaves, some turning yellow, but for the most part they stay green for a couple of frosts until they just fall off of the plant. The bark of buckthorn, young trees are light gray to gray. There's lots of these marks on them. Those are lenisols all along the bark. Older buckthorn will get more rough looking and darker than the new bark. Buckthorn will always have this reddish colored inner wood around it. And another good way to tell if you have buckthorn, you're not sure if you just scrape away at it like this, you're gonna see that red bark underneath the outer bark. Because its leaves remain green, fall is a great time to uh, control buckthorn. The smaller buckthorn can be pulled by hand, and larger ones up to two inches can be pulled out completely with one of these tools called a weed wrench. Bloomington has a variety of weed wrenches for residents to check out through the Public Works Department. You can get more information on that by calling the Maintenance Division at 952-563-8760. You want to make sure that you're pulling and managing buckthorn and that you're not pulling native trees or shrubs because they're going to be very important to replace the buckthorn once it's removed. There's some small oak trees there that Dave is working near. Larger trees will have to be cut and uh, the stumps dug out or covered with plastic like a buckthorn baggie or a simple tin can that can be fastened with a nail or a tie and left in place for over a year. Um, herbicides are also an option. By using herbicide in the fall, the buckthorn is going to take it down into its roots and kill the plant. If we apply it in the spring, the sap is flowing upward and herbicide is not as effective. For more information on that, you can look at the Bloomington website or the Minnesota DNR. Uh, the remaining buckthorn seeds can be viable for many years, so follow-up treatment on seedlings and pulling them in the following years is vital to every site that you do buckthorn control on, otherwise it'll just re-encroach and invade. It's also important to re-establish some kind of native vegetation, whether it's through seed or uh, planting shrubs and plants. Once you've removed it, you can dispose of your buckthorn by working with your trash hauler, or there's several sites around uh, Bloomington that uh, will take it. So in 50 years, if we don't manage buckthorn, will we lose all of our oaks, all of our native trees and shrubs because the buckthorn takes up all the sunlight and you can see very little growing on the ground. 
And so once these big oaks are gone, will there be anything to replace them or will we just have woods full of buckthorn? A woodland where buckthorn has been managed or there's no buckthorn is very diverse and there's lots of uh, different grasses, flowers, trees and shrubs. Hundreds of different species that grow there now that there's enough sunlight and buckthorn isn't taking over everything. So that in turn provides multiple benefits and habitat for all kinds of different wildlife.